great neck in the West. News about Long Island for the people of Long Island. 24 hours every day. This is News 12 Long Island. And now, the night edition. Good evening, I'm Joe Moskowitz. And I'm Doug Geed. It's been more than a day since a thunderstorm ripped across Long Island and hundreds of customers still have no electricity. But don't blame Lilco, it was a lot more than just another thunderstorm. Early Saturday evening, the clouds darkened then opened up. Within a two hour period, there were an incredible 1,100 lightning strikes across Long Island. At one time, 110,000 Lilco customers were without power and more than 24 hours later, 2,300 were still living by candlelight. This wasn't a normal thunderstorm. In fact, we've had a couple of major thunderstorms this summer that have seen major damage to the Lilco system, tremendous number of lightning strikes, high winds, torrential rains. This was the kind of storm that this was. This pole in Melville was part of the problem. Lightning struck the pole, the wires fell on a tree, setting the tree on fire. That left a lot of people on this block in the dark. They had to take a while to get the power uh, off. I don't know why it took them so long to do that. That I don't understand. But as far as controlling it, you know, it took a little while to get that under control. And now that it's hurricane season, this could be just a warm-up for Loco crews. Every storm that we go through is a prep for our continuing to improve our storm response. Loco wasn't alone in having to cope with the storm. A church in Northport will need some work done before the next rains come. Lilco hopes to have power restored to all but a handful of customers by Monday morning. Doug? And when disaster strikes, many Long Islanders come to the rescue. As News 12's Mary Calvi tells us, volunteers are banding together to help Midwest flood victims rebuild their broken lives. Six, seven feet deep here. Homes are lost, belongings destroyed. But one thing the town of New Franklin did not expect what was friends That's on Long Island. For. We have to help one another. They're unfortunate. We're lucky. We missed that. And now it's our turn to reciprocate and help those people. And that's God's will. Help one another, and it's the best thing in the world. The town was hit hard during the floods of the Midwest. Experts believe places like New Franklin may never be the same again. The fire department has been completely wiped out. Uh, the uh, 118 homes have been destroyed or washed away. They're in bad shape. But the town may soon be in a little better shape thanks to the help of some Baldwin volunteers. They plan to raise $50,000 through donations and a big tax sale next month. Well, this tag sale will include everything from bikes to bocce ball, an event of people helping people. We get Baldwin residents, and I'm amazed, and former Baldwin residents. So, you know, every time you get this, and little notes who who feel the compassion for this, well, it's the best feeling I ever had. The tag sale is scheduled for September 18th at the American Legion Post on South Grand Avenue in Baldwin. The money raised will be sent as a Thanksgiving gift to New Franklin from friends a half a country away. In Baldwin, Mary Calvi, News 12, Long Island. But just when they thought they were out of the deep water, some Midwestern flood victims got soaked again. Up to 10 inches of rain forced hundreds to evacuate Sunday, and crews rushed to protect the Des Moines, Iowa water treatment plant for the second time this summer. With the ground already saturated, water from the latest storm quickly dra uh, drained into streams and creeks, causing them to overflow and more rain is in the forecast. A flood warning is now in effect throughout the region. Meanwhile, Hurricane Emily continues her slow but powerful journey toward land. The storm is packing winds of up to 80 miles an hour, and that has many residents down south packing up lots of supplies. Forecasters at the National Hurricane Center say there is a chance the storm could glance off the Carolina coast and head up our way, but for now, they say the storm's most likely target is around South and North Carolina. We're now issuing a hurricane watch that is north of Charleston from Cape Romaine all the way up through the Delaware-Maryland border. This is the area that the hurricane watch is being issued for at this time. That means those areas have the potential for this storm to come into their area within 36 hours. Hurricane Emily is moving at about 9 miles an hour and is expected to hit land sometime Tuesday. Doug? Police have identified the body found floating in Great South Bay Sunday. Authorities confirm the body is that of 47-year-old Jose Rivera, who was reported missing Saturday night. Rivera was out on his boat with two friends when he went for a swim. Police say the friends lost sight of him and radioed for help. Suffolk Marine Bureau and Fire Island Coast Guard boats helped in the search. 
A car chase spanning across two towns ends with a Bayport man being shot by a Suffolk police officer. Police say the incident stemmed from an argument that broke out last night between Anthony Pantori and another man. Pantori took off in his car with Cole following him into Blue Point, then back to Bayport. Pantori allegedly fired shots at the other man. According to police, an officer responded to the scene, then ordered Pantori to drop his gun, but he didn't, so the officer shot Pantori in the leg. So far, no criminal charges have been filed. And in Hong Kong, police have arrested a man they say organizes, organized the smuggling of Chinese immigrants to the U.S. Authorities say 27-year-old Kwok Ling Kei was behind the ill-fated voyage of the Golden Venture. That ship ran aground off, the, uh, off Rockaway Beach in June with about 300 undocumented Chinese on board. Ling Kei is a reputed Chinese gang member. Coming up on the night edition, Saving the Planet, Long Beach residents do their part to keep the earth from dying out, plus educating teenagers and adults against a deadly disease, and later on in the newscast, it's a bird, it's a plane. Not exactly, but we'll tell you what they are a little later. Stay with us. It's a grand opening celebration. Visit our showcase at Farmingdale. Be part of the excitement and the grand opening sale. See everything beautiful for your home and accept our gift to you, the 96-page Home Furnishings Idea Book, Living with Drexel Heritage. Drexel Heritage Home Furnishings, Long Island's largest Drexel Heritage Showcase. Drexel Heritage Home Furnishings. These men aren't professional models with their own hair. They're clients of hair replacement centers. They're busy, active men who are going places and the hair replacement centers are helping them get there. They look great because of a breakthrough technology, protobond. This non-surgical process bonds individual strands of real hair. Choose a little or a lot. The hair replacement center's exclusive individual strand application and protobond creates a remarkable system composed of your hair and new hair that is totally undetectable even to your closest associates. It looks and feels perfectly natural. Call the Hair Replacement Centers. You can see for yourself. Our process is for real. Get your free informative guide to looking good and see some of our many hairstyles and learn how to select the best style for you. Call Hair Replacement Centers at 1-800-HAIR-311. What's clear? Crystal clear Amoco Ultimate. What isn't all other premium gasolines? What's clear? Amoco Ultimate is the only premium refined an extra step to remove harmful impurities you as a premium user don't want. What's clear? Why we do it. For a cleaner environment and unsurpassed performance, crystal clear Amoco Ultimate. The U.S. government has a role to play in making conditions better for black Americans. This according to the former nominee to head the Justice Department Civil Rights Division. Lonnie Guineer's remarks broadcast today on CBS's Face the Nation come one day after this year's March on Washington, a march marking the 30th anniversary of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech. The president has an opportunity to do, and what I think he has the potential to do, is to be a racial healer. And I think that in order to do that, he has to talk about the problems of race and racism. He has to confront the problems, not just um, talk about things in vague generalities. Munier's nomination to the Justice Department job was pulled by President Clinton after controversy arose over some of her civil rights writings. Two top aides to former President George Bush are being accused tonight of using their influence to gain favors from the Kuwaiti government. The New Yorker magazine is also reporting that two of Bush's sons are trying to capitalize on the good relations between their father and Kuwaiti leaders and are trying to win contracts as part of the rebuilding of the Middle Eastern country. The report says former Secretary of State James Baker has been lobbying on behalf of a Houston gas company and former Chief of Staff John Sununu has been doing the same on behalf of Westinghouse. The report also says Bush himself has not tried to use any influence. In other political news, President Clinton should not expect to get his health care package approved this year. That warning from Senate Minority Leader Bob Dole. The Kansas Republican told CNN that members of his party are ready to work with Mr. Clinton on health care reform, but says nothing will be accomplished this year. Senator Dole says Republicans want more emphasis on what he calls spending restraints to pay for any health care reform. 
Sunbathers visiting Long Beach got a lot more than surf and sand Sunday. They got to experience EnviroFest, an annual festival dedicated to teaching people to be more aware of their surroundings. News 12's Michelle Tracy was there. It was a most politically correct day in Long Beach as residents took to the boardwalk to learn about the value of their greatest resource. This year we're concentrating on our ocean and our shoreline. Uh, this past winter we were ravaged by the two big storms that came and as you can see we've done an excellent job bringing the beaches back but more needs to be done. The city council throws an EnviroFest party every year. It's a time for everyone to learn about new ways to conserve. We use recycled tires. It's shredded and put into a soft base. Once assembled, these little tire blocks can be used for playgrounds and roadways. The theme for this year's festival is water conservation. And even though there's about 9.7 trillion gallons of groundwater, Long Beach residents are still urged to conserve. Long Beach, as with every other supplier in Nassau County, has a water conservation ordinance in effect. In general, nobody is allowed to water their lawns between the hours of 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. Most Long Beach residents don't seem to mind pitching in to save for tomorrow. Everything over here is important to the children for their future. In Long Beach, Michelle Tracy for News 12. Another fair in Long Beach focused on AIDS education today. We caught the beginning of this outdoor festival sponsored by the Michael Hirsch Fund and the Kitchen on Pine Street. Pamphlets on the dangers of AIDS were available, as were free condoms. Uh, Michael Hirsch Fund was founded by Michael's sister. It was her way of honoring her brother who died of AIDS in 1989. My brother passed away from AIDS in 1989, and I've been raising money in Manhattan for quite a long time in his name, and I decided that um, it was time to get back into Long Beach and see what was going on. $3,300 was raised at today's event. It will be used to expand the HIV-AIDS educational curriculum at Long Beach High School. Still ahead for you tonight. It was a beautiful day today, but will the sun continue to warm the work week? Roberto Toronto will be along to tell us. And the official sign of the end of summer, the new school season. We'll tell you what some people think about going back. When stress takes its toll, wouldn't it be great to have your very own personal masseuse to soothe and relieve tension? Therafex presents the Pro Shiatsu Personal Massager. Unlike vibrating massagers that only rub the surface, Pro Shiatsu simulates the kneading action of a real masseuse, sending penetrating waves of energy to relieve pain, stress, and sore muscles. Use it on your feet, lower back, calves, and thighs. Imagine getting a relaxing massage at the office or take it along to the gym. There's nothing that soothes, relaxes, and relieves aches and pains like the Pro Shiatsu. Shiatsu Massager. A professional masseuse can charge up to $50 per hour, and catalogs have advertised similar units for as much as $200. Now you can order the Pro Shiatsu Massager for three easy payments of $33. Order now. For rush delivery, call 1-800-342-7200 or send $99 plus $12 shipping to Pro Shiatsu, P.O. Box 339-N, Verona, New Jersey 07044 to receive yours. Order now. Call 1-800-342-7200. Okay, everyone, we can relax. She's gone. Whew, what a day. This limited edition is one busy place. Yeah, that's because everyone loves us. Personally, I think they go for my expressive eyes. Just when we get to know each other, someone needs a great gift and takes us out of here. The buildings in our village keep selling all the time. The limited edition. Come in and meet the new kids in stock. Precious moments, always the perfect gift. $49.95 and under. Bayshore Mazda is the home of the $49.95 and under quality used car. Only Bayshore Mazda has them. $49.95, $39.95, even $29.95 used, not abused cars. Choose from one of the largest used car inventories on Long Island, including all makes and models protected by the unique Qualicare used car warranty. Only at Bayshore Mazda, home of the $49.95 and under quality used car. Sunrise Highway, Bayshore. Well, we've had some outstanding weather this summer, mm. Roberto. Don't let it come to an end. So it's good fortune we've had, haven't we? Yes. All the rain hit over in Iowa and Missouri. We have cold yeah. air, though, moving into the northern plains. It's got rain down in Florida. It's got a hurricane that wants to hit the, uh, the North Carolina coastline, so we've got to watch that carefully in the next couple of 36 hours. A whole bunch of things going on. Yeah, but for us, good weather still, believe it Sounds or not. Sounds good.
Ladies and gentlemen, the weather continues unabated. Beautiful, great lower dew points. It's amazing. Of course, those thunderstorms that hit for yesterday finally moved away. What we have now is a warm front moving in a northeasterly fashion across the area. As it does that, as you can imagine, what will happen is a dew point air will start going up. We'll get a little more humid. Temperatures will start going up. But it's a system where the rain is positioned, as you can see, into eastern Canada and New England as well, New Hampshire and Vermont. For us, the only thing that you'll notice that's different from Monday to today are the high clouds over the region, the dark blue skies. Not bad at all, as you can imagine. Down in Florida, lots of rain, of course. You can see just a smidgen of uh, Hurricane Emily as it makes its way toward the Mid-Atlantic. And right now, we have fears that it may be between South Carolina, North Carolina, and Maryland. But to pinpoint it, it appears like Cape Hatteras, North Carolina, could be the place to get this particular hurricane. As that moves away and that landfall arrives sometime Tuesday morning, we'll feel the effects of it Tuesday night and Wednesday in, uh, through a little bit of rain and wind over our areas. So keep that in mind. We'll probably have a little bit of sunshine for Tuesday. Finally, of course, as the system hits the Carolina coastline and gets absorbed into the landmass, it may then, of course, give us clouds. And with the clouds, we'll probably wind up with a little rain. Remember that at night for Tuesday and for Wednesday. Even, or Wednesday, this system moves very quickly. For Wednesday, the system is already absorbed and things will uh, start moving very quickly and things will uh, should start changing. Well, the reference right now, 425, when you wake up in the morning, maybe about 400 miles southeast of Cape Hatteras, and the gusts are actually up to 100 miles per hour. For us, you really have to go to the Great Lakes to see any kind of activity, as you can see there. For us, it's quite clear. Combination of clouds and sunshine for Monday, beautiful with temperatures in the low 80s, and nice dew points. It's going to be really quite nice. A sunset at 7.30 p.m. and a sunrise at 6.16 a.m. in the morning, pleasant 64 degrees. And in the afternoon, a combination of clouds and sunshine, those high clouds are easy. And then, of course, it'll be, I guess, what it was. 84 degrees. Let's take a look at our extended forecast and see when it starts clouding up. And there it is. Tuesday. Remember now, Tuesday the rain begins at night. At that point in time, Emily just becomes absorbed into the landmass, and then it becomes rain for Tuesday night into Wednesday. And then Wednesday, things actually should start clearing out late in the day. So we're not going to get, I mean, Florida's not going to get it. I'm happy about that. They're happy. Yeah. And uh, it looks like the Carolina coastline. Okay, okay. thanks a lot. Thanks. Well, folks, summer has ended for many college students. Time to go back to school. And as we found out from some Hofstra students, they have mixed reactions about picking up the books. There you go. It's still hot, it's still summer, but now it's time to hit the books again. The first students have to decide what sanctioned things to do when they're not studying. It's a whole new world for incoming freshmen, especially international students. Well, we're just going to the beach, so check that out also. But here on campus, it's great, I think. You're looking forward to the next four years? Yes, definitely am. <laughs> especially here in the States, because I'm not from the States. Where are you from? Uh, I'm German, but I'm from Switzerland. For the more experienced students, it's time to say hello to old friends and talk about what they did over the summer. I'm a cheerleader. I broke my foot at cheerleading camp about two weeks ago. So now I start the semester on crutches. And they're the seniors moving in for the last time. Looking forward to this, the last yes, year? Yes, yes. Any big plans for this year? You're not interviewing <laughs> This is funny, but you're not interviewing me. Okay, we're not interviewing you. I feel I'm done. I just don't even need to be here anymore. Okay. But, uh, but I'm ha yeah. back having a good time. Okay. I am having a good time. I'm partying hard. All right. Yeah. You don't want to come up a year short on your degree. True, true. You know, you need a diploma or else I'm not going anywhere. It's a very good feeling. She's enjoyed it and she's earned it. And I'm really happy for her. It'll be a great relief when you don't have to make these tuition payments either. Well, actually, <laughs> this student is going on to graduate school, so we don't know when it will end. Hostra costs about $16,000 a year. Adelphi and SUNY Stony Brook are also among the schools welcoming back students this week. Nothing like the college days. Oh, boy, that was Brings fun. Back first week, yeah, stuff. going back for that first week. Well, when News 12 returns, we'll uh, show you some of the unique objects that were flying over Uniondale today near Hofstra. And in sports, to serve or not to serve. For Mark Rosé, it was no question. Carl Reuter has the story of the Hamlet Cup coming up. These men aren't professional models with their own hair. They're clients of hair replacement centers. They're busy, active men who are going places. And the hair replacement centers are helping them get there. They look great because of a breakthrough technology, protobond. This non-surgical process bonds individual strands of real hair. Choose a little or a lot. The Hair Replacement Center's exclusive individual strand application and protobond 
creates a remarkable system composed of your hair and new hair that is totally undetectable even to your closest associates. It looks and feels perfectly natural. Call the Hair Replacement Centers. You can see for yourself. Our process is for real. Get your free informative guide to looking good and see some of our many hairstyles and learn how to select the best style for you. Call Hair Replacement Centers at 1-800-HAIR-311. At Nobody Beats the Wiz, all these numbers add up to one. One keyboard, one mouse, one monitor, one modem. Eight preloaded software packages set up in 15 minutes or less. With 486 power and performance, it's IBM power made easy. And at Nobody Beats the Wiz, you'll find a complete assortment of IBM PS1 starting at just $10.99. Now all the numbers add up to one. IBM PS1, on sale at Nobody Beats the Wiz. Everyone knows that when you want to save money buying or leasing a brand new Buick or GMC truck, you get the Tom Rice price. Everyone knows that you can save twice because Tom Rice always discounts the complete line of Buick and GMC trucks. Save twice. Get the famous Tom Rice price on Buick and the full line of GMC trucks. Only at Tom Rice Buick, you get the Tom Rice price. Tom Rice Buick. And GMC trucks. Time for sports. Carl Reuter, some of the biggest names in tennis, came to Long Island, but not one of the bigger names took it all, uh, no, won it all. Not at all. No, not at all. You guys are very good. Thank I'm, you. I'm, Thank you, I'm Carl. impressed. I really am. Doug, uh, he was unseated, <laughs> but Mark Rosé is the champ of this year's Waldbaum's Hamlet Cup. The 6'7 Rosé beat the number 5 seed Michael Chang in three sets, 6'4", 3661 To the Hamlet we go out in Comac. First set, Rosé with the ace. And, and I guess he had some oomph on it. Chang now serving, and Rosé with a strong forehand return. The Swiss native took the first set, 6-4. Second set, Rosé found it tough to keep Chang down. Chang won the set, 6-3. Third set, match point, giving Rosé the Hamlet Cup. Rosé pockets $39,600 for the victory. Baseball today, every Yankee starter had at least one hit in the Bronx Bombers' 14-8 win over Cleveland. Deion James led the way going 3-5, for five, including 4 RBI. The Yanks remain in a first-place tie with Toronto because in Seattle, the Blue Jays beat the Mariners 6-2 to, to the mistake on the lake. Bottom half of the third, 5-2 Cleveland, Sandy Alomar facing Jim Abbott, and Alomar doubles down the line past Wade Boggs. Candy Maldonado and Alvaro Espinosa score 7-2 in favor of the Tribe. In the sixth, Indians up 7-4, two outs in the bags full for that man James. He singles to left, plating two more Bombers who trail by just one. Same inning, now tied at seven. It's Paul O'Neill ripping one to the gap in right center field, falls at the base of the wall. Bases loaded clearing double gave the Yanks a 10-7 lead en route to their 14-8 win. And why is the Tribe's Carlos Baerga yawning? Well, he knows what's coming up next. Met highlights. Well, sorry to disappoint you, but there are no Met highlights because at Shea this afternoon, Colorado beat New York 6-1, just another day at the office for the worst team in baseball. Top of the six, game tied at one. When Colorado's Gerald Clark, Joe, listen to this, Rockies won against starter and loser Frank Tanana. Three-run homer put Colorado up 4-1. to one. They win it 6-1. to one. The Hampton Classic Horse Show began its week-long stay in Bridgehampton this afternoon with local competition and a display of horses from around the globe. Mike Zimmett took in the festivities. Jump. Opening day at the Hampton Classic, a time for non-horse experts to sit back and enjoy a display of animals from every corner of the earth. Local day is, has turned out to be the largest one-day horse show in America. It's actually a separate horse show than the rest of the week, which starts on Tuesday. The day began with a fashion show featuring both humans and animals. Then it was time for the Nine West World of Horses. The proceeds, as you know, go to the uh, Southampton Hospital and also the U.S. Uh, equestrian team. And we really want to have that kind of involvement. Opening day at the Hampton Classic is all about the world of a horse. However, things are a little different this year. This isn't a horse. It's a llama. Very, very gentle animals. They, there's, the only thing they do to protect themselves is flee, try to get away. But in addition to the llamas, there were horses of every type everywhere you looked. These kind of horses are? Arabians. Origination? 
Egypt. It's a breed called a Pasifino. It's a Spanish breed. You're going to be riding in the parade soon? Yeah. You a little nervous? Yeah. <laughs> How do you like this baby? He's a good boy. A pig, but he's a good boy. <laughs> in Bridgehampton, Mike Zimmett, News 12, Long Island. Maybe one day this week, Mike will get on a horse or a llama. Yeah. Football news, <laughs> former Jets quarterback Ken O'Brien released today by the Green Bay Packers. And finally, the Arthur Ashe AIDS Challenge was held at Flushing Meadow this afternoon. Now on hand was Monica Sellis, who will not be able to defend her singles title. She captured the last two years at the U.S. Open. So in her honor, John McEnroe put on a grunt fest of his own against Andre Agassi. <laughs> Agassi, though, had the last laugh, winning the match, chasing McEnroe from stadium court. And Mac has yet to resurface. That'll do it. Should I, uh, back to Joe and Doug? I say Zimmick grunts when he does the sports. You might as well. <laughs> okay, finally tonight, there are a lot of things up in the air at Mitchell Field today. The skies, well, the skies didn't do it, but it, nonetheless, there weren't too many wins. Nonetheless, the kite flyers were determined to try. News 12's Michelle Tracy has more. Mother Nature was a little stingy with the wind, but that didn't stop these Long Islanders from having some high-altitude fun. The folks at the Cradle of Aviation Museum opened their doors and parking lot so people could enjoy and also learn about kites. You know, kites weren't always just for fun. Models like this one helped teach man how to fly. That is a French military kite. It was made around World War I, and they used it for observation purposes. <laughs> Whoa! Calm <laughs> down, guys. So next time someone tells you to go fly a kite, don't be insulted. You never know. You may learn something. The first radio transmissions were made by sending up kites with metal wire, and that formed the aerial. Modern communication was done that way. In Uniondale, Michelle Tracy for News 12. The man on the ground didn't really fall. That was Mike Zimmett falling off a horse. <laughs> That's our news for now. Thanks for watching. I'm Joe Boskowitz. And I'm Doug Gee. Glad you could join us. <laughs>